Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this Getting Started tutorial, we're going to learn the basics of creating a machine part setup document. A machine part setup document is used to describe to Top Solid what the part to cut is and what the stock model will be for that. In this specific tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a block stock. We'll go through several of the options, including global offset, variable offset, and how to lock sizes to get specifically the size block you're looking for. Let's see how it all works. In order to create a machine part setup document, you need to have a part to reference. In this case, I have a part called 3D Part. I'm going to double click on it to open it. Now the first point I want you to understand is that you don't need to open the part document in order to create the machine part setup documents. You can of course just right mouse button click here and go straight to machine part setup document. If you do this, a dialog box will open. You can validate out of that. And like that, you're now in your machine part setup document. But I want to show you another way to get there as well. What I want you to understand is that there's multiple ways to get to the finish line in Top Solid. In this case, I have my 3D part open. And because I have it open, I'm going to go ahead up to the tab up here that has the name of my 3D part file, my design file. And I'm going to right mouse button click there. In this case, you'll see you have machine part setup again. If I select that and validate out of the dialog, again we get put directly into the machine part setup document and again it's put in the proper place in our project tree. Pretty awesome. Now another note for you. Some people refer to machine part setup documents as MPS files for short. And moving forward that's what I'm going to refer to it as. Now on the left hand side of the screen as soon as you activate the creation of an MPS file the software automatically puts you in the edit part NC function. This is where you describe the stock model to top solid. Let's have a look. The next step I usually do is I expand open one of my managers so that when I select this icon to launch into the settings I can dock it by double clicking right here to have easier access to everything. Now let's look at all the options in this dialog. Up here is the finish area. Here you can select the models that you are going to create a stock blank for. I say models because it is possible to load several parts into an MPS file and then create one block stock around it. So you're cutting several parts out of one hunk of material. Speaking of stocks, let's look at all of the stock types. Here we have a simple block, a cylinder, user stock for like a casting and whatnot, maybe we don't want to use stock, or inheriting stock from the design. In this case we're just going to use simple block stock. The next option down is something called a frame. The frame here is used to calculate the orientation of the block. In this case the software just chose the absolute frame. Now this is a simple part and it's perfectly oriented already. Maybe your part comes in in some strange position so you may have to create an orientation frame in order to orient your stock properly. The next option down is called single margin. This is great for fast creation of stock blanks. I want to use a single margin and maybe that margin I want to be an eighth inch per side bigger and you can see I typed an eighth inch, I hit tab on my keyboard and now my stock block is an eighth inch per side bigger on all sides. However maybe you want to be specific about the stock size. Maybe you want to have a look at something that's an eighth inch in the X minus, how about a half inch in Y, quarter inch in Z minus, and I'll put 0.1 in all the other fields for you. What I want you to see here is the software is again doing exactly as you're told. Now another way to modify would be to grab onto the grip here and pull and tug on it. You can also double click on the balloon and set it exactly to what you want. Now the next thing to understand is this. I've created some random stock block. I have no idea how big this material is. But if we go and look in the dialog box, the software is continuously updating the overall length in X, Y, and Z. Now maybe you have a specific block that you want to use. Maybe you have a piece of scrap on the shop floor and you know it's six and a half inches, and in Y it's five inches, and in Z it's three inches. Now I'm locking these fields to show you another cool tool. So we have six and a half by five by three, and you can see it's updated here, and the software has auto-centered the block on all sides. That's pretty cool. But now in this case, I'm going to say in the Z positive, I want to leave, I want to leave only thirty thousandths on the top. So I'm going to type thirty there, and the software puts the remaining of the oversized stock in the Z minus. This gives you something to hold on to with your vice. 
Make sense? Last, you hit validate here to validate the creation of the stock blank. And then finally, if you look in your project tree, you can see the machine part setup document is located in the same directory as your part. There's the asterisk there that's telling you to save. So let's go up and hit save. And now you're ready to send this to CAM to machine the part.